waited, oh, the blade wow. tends to automatically align. This is I can even drop the sword. So it really depends on what kind of training you want to do. So because I also training in the Tamishi to the mat cutting, I absolutely need these real katana for that. When training in Yaido, there are actually quite a lot of occasions where you have the katana on the floor and walking over it is very, very rude. It is like walking over a friend who's sleeping. I think I've heard of this before. Konnichiwa, and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. So recently, there seems to be more and more channels, YouTube channels, talking about katana. As a Yaido trainee who has been training the katana for about seven years, I have also been making a lot of videos related to katana, and a lot of people have been giving me DMs through Instagram and also comments for my opinions on the other channels that talk about katana. And among all of the wonderful channels that also talk about katana, a lot of people especially have been giving me a lot a request to react to the mini katana channels on YouTube shorts. So today that is what I'm going to be doing today. But as I always say in all of my katana videos everyone though, please keep in mind that I've only been training the katana for about seven, eight years myself and I do a lot of studying about katana. I try my best of course but still at the same time every single thing that I talk about has different theories and different ideas. So what I talk about in my videos and in this video too, please just understand that this is just one theory, this one idea from this one person, one Japanese man. So please don't think that what I talk about is, is the absolute answer to anything. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese spiritual culture, tips on traveling Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's All right, so then let's start taking a look at their videos. 100% of left-handed people commented on our how to display your katana videos, saying that they are the pinnacle of respect because they have easy access to a properly displayed uh, katana. However, this is not true. Traditionally, all samurai were forced to wield their katana mm -hmm. right-handed exactly. for various reasons. So even if you are left-handed, you would have been trained to use your katana right-handed. But I've got a question for you left-handed people. How do you open the fridge? <laughs> He said so strongly. You know, I actually made a video talking about how to display your katana too. It was a YouTube shorts that I made and I got the same comments too, that they have an advantage because they're able to draw the katana with their left hand, even if the katana has the handle onto the left side. But as they were explaining, yes, during the uh, samurai era, the samurai period, yes, the samurai were all forced to do everything with their right hand. But that's not just the katana, actually, though. It could be the tea ceremony, it could be calligraphy, it could be the Japanese bow. Everything needed to be done right-handed. And he explained that there's a lot of reasons for it, but one of the major reasons, especially during the Edo period, when there, the population was really big due to the long period of peace, because the samurai always had to have two katana with them. When they walked past each other, they never want to bump their scabbards against each other when they walk past each other. So they made a rule to always walk on the left side and keep their katana on their left waist so they would never bump into each other. And if you have your katana on your left waist, evidently you have to use your right hand to draw the katana out, so everyone had the right hand on top. So basically the reason why you had to use your right hand for everything was to maintain order during the Edo period. And the custom has been carried on even today. So I personally have never heard of any dojos or duha styles that teaches how to draw the katana on your right waist. If you have ever heard of any duhas that, this, that does this, please let me know in the comments. I personally have never heard or seen anyone doing that before. So even today, again, as I said, all the other Japanese traditional culture too are all done with our right hands. But what I did talk about in my previous videos where I talked about left-handed samurai is that when you continue training the katana, you really find out that the two hands that you use to hold onto the katana, the balance is actually a little bit different. So you use your right hand to give the direction of the katana. So it's basically it's more of the control, and it's actually your left hand that gives the power and force to the katana. So if you're left-handed, you have that advantage. You're able to give more, your katana more speed and power, whereas right-handed people might be able to be 
better at controlling the katana. And actually, to be honest, if you're right-handed, you tend to put too much power into your right hand, which gives an unbalanced swing to the katana. So if you're able to put more power into your left hand naturally, that is actually a really big advantage. Now let's take a look at the next one. The other day we posted a video about what this groove is. This mm -hmm. groove is actually called a bohi in Japanese, and bohi. a few people yep. commented saying that a bohi gives it a whoosh sound. So let's test it oh, out and swamp. see if it actually works. So first we have Tanjiro's Nichirin that doesn't have a bohi. And next we have Mitsuri's Nichirin that does have a bohi. So they both actually make a whoosh sound. Very cool. I actually made a video about the katana groove myself in the past too, but there's actually a lot of reasons to it. So what he explained in this video that a katana without a groove can make sounds too, but it is absolutely true that katana with grooves can make the sound much easier though. That's actually one of the reasons why people choose the katana with the bohi to make the sound, to produce the sound easier. Especially if you're, for example, training in iaido, you do the kata, there's more impact when you can make the sound. So that's one of the reasons why people choose katana that has the grooves. And probably the biggest reason though that people have the grooves in the katana is to make the katana lighter. It's said that about 10% of the weight of the katana will be removed if you have the heat, the groove carved in it. But by the way, what I explained in my video in the past is that that is exactly what I learned too, from being able to make the sound bigger, being able to make it lighter and such. But what I found a really interesting study that says that the groove actually functions as basically putting air into the katana to be able to pull it out from something that you stabbed. So it's almost like putting air into a suction cup that's on, on the wall, and you put air in to easily peel it off kind of thing. So some people were saying that the groove was for that too. So I thought that study was really interesting. So if you're interested, I hope you can check out that video too. The next video. If we had a dollar for every time someone asked us if these are sharp, everyone at Mini Katana would be retired. But to answer your question, yes and no. We sell both sharp and dull. The sharp uh, are good for light cutting, and the dull are great for display and cosplay. Uh, but both are great for boosting your body's natural production of dopamine. Dopamine <laughs> smashing something with a katana. Yeah, it's so amazing that the mini katana of the channel actually sells the katana too. I think that's really amazing. And as for me as a katana trainee, how we would choose a doll katana or a real katana would be a little bit different. For example, the doll katana that I have here are called yaito. Yaito are the katana that are meant for training, practicing the yaido, which is the katana martial arts using the katana. So these katana are made from zinc alloy actually, and they look pretty good, but they're actually not real. They, they can't cut anything. It's completely dull. And it's perfect for um, beginners who are training in Yaido to start training with these katana to safely practice their skills first before they move on to a real katana. In the Yaido that I train in, for example, usually the people who start using real katana to perform the kata, the fixed movements for their skills, would probably be from around the fifth dan, from fifth dan, which takes a lot, many, many years to get to. That's the timing when they would finally start using a real katana. So until then, using these zinc alloy katana, which are called yaito, would absolutely be safer. So that would be the reason why I would usually explain to use these dal katana. And also the real katana, of course, if you want to, for example, train in map cutting and such, even if you're still a beginner, you would absolutely need these real katana to do the mat cutting. So it really depends on what kind of training you want to do. So because I also training in the Tamishi to the mat cutting, I absolutely need these real katana for that. So I own a real katana too. So it really depends on what kind of training you do you want to do and also what level you are in the training is the reason I would explain for choosing a doll katana or a real katana. All right, let's keep going. Did you know that these two dinky bamboo pieces are the dinky only thing that keeps your katana pieces. from falling apart? That's right, these uh -huh. are known as mekugi and they are used in all katanas. The way it yep, works is yep. that the blade actually runs all the way through the handle. Then exactly. these pegs are wedged through the handle and the blade. Now, if you want to be a mekugi-less master, I check out one of our Attack on Titan swords. Oh, wow. They actually have the Attack on Titan swords too? That was really, really cool, wow. Yeah, I actually made a YouTube shorts about this too. There's only one bamboo pin that connects the, the handle and also the blade together. And a lot of people told me, why wouldn't you use the metal ones to hold, hold the, uh, the handle and blade together? I mean, bamboo seems really weak. But actually back in the time, in ancient times in Japan, there was a period where they used metal pins instead. But actually metal pins are a little bit too strong that when the katana strikes something, all of the power goes into the handle and it starts to damage the handle actually. So the bamboo that is flexible and soft actually absorbs that impact that comes from a strike. 
a lot of people told me like why would you use a bamboo that's so you know almost stupid to do that but of course Japanese people have spent hundreds and hundreds of years on the katana how to make them sharper how to make them more effective and such and of course they must have tried everything so in the end this was the most efficient way to do it putting one or two pins in it and it really does depend on the katana. There, there are some katana that only has one mekugi pin, but there are some katana that has two. And when you buy a katana for the Kamishiki mat cutting, it is usually recommended to, to choose a katana with two mekugi pins for safety. Because of course the bamboo pins, once in a while you do have to change them. You do need to buy a new mekugi pin or make a new mekugi pin for safety. But for example, the real katana that I have only have one, and I personally feel that having only one mekugi pin would probably be the majority of the katana. I feel that about 70% of the katana, real katana, only have one mekugi hole, but the um, master class people in the Tamishiki training, cutting training, would usually recommend a two Mikugi katana for the Tamishiki cutting. Then let's take a look at the next one. Do you know how to properly break the seal on your katana? Some katanas hmm. can have quite a tight seal when sheathed, and it can yep. sometimes be difficult to break that seal. Knowing how to properly <laughs> break the seal will give you more control over your katana, and it also mm -hmm. just looks better. First, instead of just pulling your sheath and katana apart, move mm -hmm. your left hand mm -hmm. higher towards the suba, then use your thumb to smoothly break the seal. Now, if you yep, want to be exactly. a subaless savage, I'd suggest getting one of these. <laughs> no skin. <laughs> they make literally everything. That's so amazing. And yes, that's right. Breaking the seal of the katana with your thumb. This movement is called koikuchi wo kiru in Japanese. Now the koikuchi is this, the entrance of the scabbard. And it means to cut this koikuchi to pull the katana out. So this is absolutely something that you are taught in Iaido 2. When you do any kind of kata, any kind of move, you are taught that you must use your thumb to cut the koikuchi, basically, koikuchi wo kiru. But I did recently explain in one of my YouTube shorts that this way of pulling the katana out is actually not so practical. It was an instructor of kobudo or kobujutsu, which is the ancient Japanese martial arts instructor that told, taught me this. But basically, if you do this, to draw your katana. It takes a lot more time. You need to, you have to put your thumb on the tsuba, you need to pull it out. If you're, for example, suddenly attacked in a real battle, you, you panic, right? You would uh, rush to pull your katana out. If you have your thumb here, you might accidentally cut your thumb with the blade and such. So in order to avoid these risks, in a real fight, you could do this instead. Get it? So you don't put your thumb on the tsuba, which you know, evidently tells your opponent that you're gonna be drawing the katana out, right? And then the person will prepare to fight back as well. So by breaking the seal, just by gripping this in, you can still pull out the katana too. This basically removes all of the disadvantages of using your thumb to pull the katana out, and it doesn't tell your opponent when you're gonna be drawing the katana out. So you'll have a higher chance of winning. However, the reason why that in martial arts like Iaido that I train in teaches to do this properly is because even back in the samurai time, it was definitely not fair to draw the katana out like this because you never are telling the opponent when you're going to be drawing the katana out. So it's really interesting how the Japanese word to betray is called uragiru, uragiru, which means to cut from the other side. This is it because you're cutting the seal of the katana from the other side of the tsuba, you're betraying your opponent or the other person. So that's the reason why you could use this technique, but as a samurai who wants to fight fair, it's not a good thing to do. But back in a time when you're actually risking your life, which is more important, right? Fighting fair or saving your own life. So that's the reason why the kobudo, especially the ancient martial instructor, taught me this way of drawing a katana too. But actually in Iaido training, I would do this as well, koikuchi wo kiru. Okay, so the next one. Did you know you need to clean your katana regularly? Not regularly <laughs> cleaning your katana can lead to damage and mm. rust, but you don't well, want to just use any old rust. cleaner like bleach or else bad things will happen. Instead, use a katana <laughs> cleaning kit like the one found on our website. Look at all these goodies it comes with. This thing mm. is called an Ichiko ball. For a full in-depth how-to as well as how often video, check out our YouTube channel at Mini Katana. And if you don't feel like doing any cleaning, I oh. check out one of these. Oh, they have the really small ones too. That's so cool. Yes, that's right. The katana maintenance, the cleaning is really, really important. Usually, if you have a real katana, you would usually do the maintenance every three to four months if you don't use it for the mat cutting training. If you do it for the mat cutting training, you need to absolutely wipe it and clean it every time you use it. However, this actually has a lot of opinion. The uchiko, he explained, 
to do the maintenance. Basically, the powder actually has Westone powder in it, and it's meant to remove the old oil that you applied last time you did the maintenance. So basically, the maintenance is wiping the katana, applying the Uchiko powder to remove the old oil, you wipe away the Uchiko powder, and then you apply the new oil over it to prevent it from rusting. However, many people say that this Westone powder maintenance style actually was developed after the Meiji period when samurai were gone. So many people say that using too much of the Uchiko powder too often will actually damage the katana. And there are a lot of katana collectors, katana lovers that I have as friends telling me that I usually never actually use the Uchiko. And as you were seeing in this video, Mini Katana was applying quite a lot of Uchiko on the sword. I think the amount of Uchiko he was putting on the Katana would be a little bit too much. If you're going to be applying the oil, you do need to use the Uchiko, but applying it too much would probably rather damage the Katana. So you do need to be careful about how much you use. And if you want to know how much then you need to apply the Uchiko every time you do the maintenance, I have a video of the Katana maintenance done by a Japanese swordsmith. So I hope you can check his video out for me. I personally have the experience of training under a Tamishigiri mat cutting instructor and some of the instructors that I know of never ever use the Uchiko nor the oil too because they use the katana to do mat cutting so often that they wipe it every day. And back in the samurai time again when they didn't have the Uchiko and the oil and everything the clove oil we usually use today they always had it on their waist every single day so they would just simply wipe it every day and then there will be no rust regardless of not having the oil or not and such. And that's the reason why the clove oil and also the Uchiko was rather produced recently in invented recently to suit the modern day where we don't usually use our katana every day. So you really need to maintain a good balance for the maintenance though. All right, next video then. Curved swords are superior to straight swords for cutting. Okay. Let me show you why. I'll be dropping a katana versus a straight sword at a very slight angle onto okay. this cardboard so that we can visually see the katana's automatic edge alignment in action. Oh. So starting off, we have the straight sword. As you can see, it tends to just bounce off because mm -hmm. the edge mm -hmm. is not perfectly aligned. And now let's drop the katana because the way a curved blade is weighted, oh, the blade wow. tends to automatically align. I can even drop amazing. the sword at almost a 45 degree angle and it is still able to correct my misalignment. It's almost like the curved Amazing. blades have been possessed by the legendary power of the cat. Of the cat. Oh, I think this experiment is amazing. You know, I've explained in my past videos many times that the curve of the blade is for a stronger cut, also moving the center of the blade more convenient to the user and such, but I've actually never seen such an experiment before. Oh, this is amazing. Wow. It is something that we all say in the world of Kamishiki the mat cutting that we should always let the katana do the cutting for us. The people who fail to do the mat cutting properly are the people who try to put their own power, their own intentions into the katana and try to use the katana like a bat. What you really need to focus on is to become a very convenient tool for the katana. That's the kind, that's the kind of idea that you need to have. So you try to move your body so that the katana can do its work. It's not you trying to force the katana to do something. You're trying to adapt to the katana that you're using. This is a really important humble mindset that you need to learn through Tamashiki training. And I think it's the biggest message that it teaches you. Then next. Here are five things you should not do with a katana. Number one, do not display blade down as this can dull the blade. Number two, do not display with the handle facing to the right. Doing this means you are actively at work because it is in a more easy to get to position. Number three, do not touch the blade with your hands as this can rust it. Number four, do not use any harsh chemicals to clean the blade. Always use a proper katana cleaning kit. Number five, katanas get lonely, so make sure you buy as many as possible. They're trying to sell their katana. Yeah, the five things they explained is completely true. Absolutely true. As I explained all the time, you can see my katana are all have the handles to the left side and all the sharp sides are upwards. A lot of people who haven't trained um, katana before tend to have the sharp side downwards when they put it on their waist and such, but that's not correct. Even when you put the katana on your waist, you would always have the sharp side upwards as well. And also he would say that you should never use any harsh chemicals on the katana and such. Yes, that is true as well. The oil that you apply on the katana is usually clove oil. And I have been receiving a few questions about if we can use some other type of oil for the maintenance. Um, I 
actually have found some articles saying that you could use this oil as a substitute and such, but I, as a katana trainee, personally would not recommend it because I can't guarantee you the results of what would happen to your katana. It's probably best you find a katana shop that uh, ships their goods overseas and to get the proper katana uh, maintenance set. It's not that expensive, and once you get that, you're 100% sure that you won't be damaging your katana. So I would personally say that's a better option. And also the last thing he said, katana will get lonely if you only have one katana. Uh, I guess I must say that I agree with that. <laughs> you can see all my katana here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, including my two wakizashi. And I actually have about three or four more in a different room actually as well. And I am not going to be stopping here either. So yeah, it's best that you have a very nice katana family inside your room, I think. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. Here's something you should never do with your katana. When holding a katana while it's sheathed, you should never hold it by just the handle because the saya can easily fall off. Uh -huh. You should also never hold your sheathed katana by just the saya because the blade can easily fall out. So how can we prevent this from happening? Well, it's pretty easy. First, you hold your katana towards the top of the saya, then use your thumb to hold the suba. This will stop your katana from accidentally being unsheathed. You should get in the habit of doing this exactly. as safety should that's be your right, number one right. priority when handling any weapon. <laughs> Yup, this is super, super important that you do, especially if you're training in a katana martial art. A lot of people ask me that if there's any injuries when you train with katana because these, these swords are absolutely really, really sharp, right? And many people imagine that when you do get injuries from these katana, it would be when you're, for example, you're going to be pulling out the katana or when you're swinging around would be when you get injuries, right? But no, the biggest risk you might hurt yourself is when you accidentally drop the sword up out of your scabbard. Now what happens, this is what beginners tend to do. They walk around without holding, putting their thumb on the tsuba, they walk around and they need to pick something up from the floor, the blade falls out, right? The blade falls out and they think, oh no, my blade is gonna be hitting the floor and they reach out for it. That's when they cut their hand. And when it happens immediately, you can't judge that it might be dangerous or not and you accidentally pull it, put your hand out and that is when most people get injured with the katana. So as he explained, you must always keep your thumb on the tsuba. But I think it's his thumb that was really, really deep like, like this. It's more like just keeping it on, on the top gently like this is, is enough to prevent it from falling out. And one more mistake that many people tend to make when, when they're taught to keep their thumb on the tsuba is they tend to keep their thumb right here. And right in the middle of the tsuba is where people tend to put their thumb. But this is incorrect too, because for example, if you're going to be pulling your sword out from here, your thumb is going to be sliced into two if you do that, right? So whenever you hold onto katana, you need to move your thumb to the side like this and hold it here, grip it here. So it comes this way, for example, if I show you from this way. Never the center like this, never the center like this, more, a little bit more to the side. So this is absolutely very, very important, not just to prevent damaging your katana, but to prevent injuries too. This is the very first, most important thing that katana trainees must learn and get used to as soon as possible. Okay, so then the next one. Here are 4.3 things you should not do with a katana. Number okay. one, never step over your katana. When training oh, yeah. in Yaido, there are actually quite a lot of occasions where you put your katana on the floor, and stepping over it can be seen as very, very rude to the katana. Think of it almost mm -hmm. like stepping over your friend's head while they are sleeping. Number two, never point your katana at anyone. Since swords okay. aren't actively used as they once were centuries ago, there should be no reason to ever point your sword at anyone. Number three, exactly. never use your katana as a cane. A sword mm -hmm. is not just a tool, it is a sacred object, and it must be handled with care and respect. Number four, Absolutely. do not display your katana unsheathed, as this can be dangerous. Oh. The scabbard also protects your katana from humidity, which can lead mm -hmm. to rust. Mm -hmm. Number 4.3, never adopt just a single katana, as they can get lonely, so make sure you adopt <laughs> there as many we go as possible. Again. <laughs> there we go again. But hold on, guys. The first one that he was saying, when training in Yaido, there are actually quite a lot of occasions where you have the katana on the floor, and walking over it is very, very rude. It is like walking over a friend who's sleeping. I think I've heard of this before. However, once you start training in the Ido, you will realize that there are actually quite a lot of occasions where you put the katana on the floor. It's almost like walking over someone's face who's napping on the floor. A katana is not just a tool, it is closer to a sacred object. 
But anyways, I have actually made a video talking about the five katana taboos. And the few things, the one thing that I absolutely did not include is the one talking about displaying your katana unsheathed. I didn't include this one because it's something that I've never even considered before. Keeping your katana unsheathed and displaying it is something that is very, very dangerous. As he was saying, it will make the katana very vulnerable to rust. When you go to a museum, you would have the blade, you would see the blade out from the sheath and displayed and such. But that is because they do the proper maintenance every single day and handle it with the utmost care. If you're gonna be keeping this at the house just for display and not doing the maintenance properly and not, uh, for example, adjusting the humidity inside the room, the temperature inside the room and such, you must keep the katana in the scabbard, absolutely. It's for safety, it's for preventing the, the rust, and I understand that um, pulling the blade out and displaying it would look really cool, but if you want to do that, I guess I would definitely recommend the Yaito I was talking about earlier, the Zinc Alloy Katana. They will not rust and they're not sharp either, so I think if you want to display the katana with the blade out, that would be my recommendation. With a real katana, you should absolutely not do that. It's way too dangerous. And also the fifth taboo that I introduced in my previous video is talking about how to hand a katana to someone. For example, if you have a friend over coming to your house and they say, oh, can I see your katana? Yeah, you shouldn't just randomly hand the katana to them. It's really dangerous. So I explained that in order to safely hand a katana to someone, it's best that you hold the bottom like this and support it from the bottom here and keep this space opened of the tsuka handle so the other person can take the katana here and take a look at it. And again, as you can see, the sharp side should be facing towards you. If you hold the katana like this, it's impossible for the blade to come any closer to you like this. But if you hold the blade like this, it can fall out of your hands much easier because on this side you have your thumb, so it's much more difficult for the blade to tilt this way, so this is the safest way to do it. This is really important, for example, when you go to a katana shop too, and the katana owner, for example, lets you see a katana and you hold it into your hands, and when you want to give the katana back to the shop owner, for example, it's very polite and very safe to, much safer to hand the katana back to the person, like I just explained. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I really enjoyed taking a look at Mini Katana shirts. I think the best part about it is they actually provide a lot of interesting content and information, but also they actually sell the katana too. So if you got interested in their products while watching their videos, you can actually get their katana. So I think that's really interesting. And also the fact that they have some comedy in it too. I really, really enjoyed it. I think in my videos, I hardly put any, what should I say, funny bars, any bum bars, to it, just the information. So I really thought I should uh, learn a lot from Mini Katana. I really enjoyed um, their content. And by the way, a lot of people always ask me, where do I recommend to buy Katana? And I really apologize to Mini Katana, but as a Yaido trainee, I always highly recommend Tozando. They are absolutely the best Japanese Budo martial art goods shop. They manufacture the best products. So if you're interested in buying katana where I got all my katana, you can check out Tozano's website, which is inside the description box. So everyone, if you thought this video was interesting to learn more about the katana, it'd be great if you can give me the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And our goal is to achieve 2 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And I'll see you in my next personal react video. Thank you so much guys for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.